The Lord be with you. Welcome to each of you to God's house as we gather in this Epiphany season on the second Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. And this morning we'll be using Divine Service Setting 3 as it's printed for you in your bulletin. Uh, no announcements per se. I would like to uh, just briefly announce the fact that during this season of Epiphany, one of the main themes that uh, the church focuses on is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the exposing of Jesus Christ to the world as its only Lord and Savior. Uh, one of the blessings of this pandemic over the last several months is that it has forced us as a congregation to focus on just how we collectively are exposing Jesus uh, to the world around us. And of course, as a result of that, uh, our, uh, our uh, online streaming of the service uh, has been greatly enhanced. Uh, our radio ministry continues. And very soon, uh, I would say very soon, and I'm looking at Howard and he's nodding, uh, we will also now be broadcasting our services on Nutmeg Television, which is the local uh, cable access here in Connecticut. Uh, Channel 5, I believe, for those of you who have Comcast, will find out Frontier and all the other uh, TV systems. But that will mean for us that we'll basically be using all of the electronic and social media that's available uh, to get the word out, to expose Christ to our community, uh, to open up Emmanuel Lutheran to, uh, to our neighbors and, and friends, and of, of course, all of our members uh, who may still be unable to be with us. So it's been a great blessing uh, as these months have gone on and the, the work behind the scenes that so many of our members have been, uh, been about. Uh, but it is tr a truly a blessing, and we look forward. Uh, we'll have, as I say, more information uh, about how to uh, watch the service uh, on television, but by way of computer, by way of radio, by way of TV, uh, we will have it all covered, and we thank the Lord that we've had the opportunity to do that. So I just wanted to mention that, uh, but let's prepare our hearts and minds for the divine service as we turn to the service of preparation on page 3. God bless each of us this morning. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 794, The Lord My God Be Praised.
my God be praised, my light, my life from heaven. My maker who to me has soul and body given. My father who will shield and keep me day by day and make each moment yield new blessings on my way. The Lord my God be praised, my trust, my life from heaven. The Father's own dear Son, whose life for me was given, who for my sin atoned with his most precious blood, and gives to me by faith the highest heavenly good. The Lord my God be praised, my hope, my life from heaven. The Spirit whom the Son in love to me was given. His grace revives my heart and gives my spirit power help, comfort, and support in sorrow's gloomy hour. The Lord my God be praised, my God be ever living, to whom the heavenly host their Lord and praise are giving. The Lord my God be praised, in whose great name I boast, God Father, God the Son, and God the Holy. Have mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God.
Us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this second Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. The young man, Samuel, was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant Hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol Him, all peoples. For great is His steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by His power. Do you not know 
that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God. You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God with and in your body. This is the word of the Lord. We rise. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. To thee, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? And Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again 
according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, hymn number 802, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, Thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains, high soaring above, Thy clouds, which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life Thou givest, to both great and small. In all life Thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree. We wither and perish, but naught changes Thee. Great Father of glory, pure Father of light, Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each and every one of you from God our Heavenly Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, my very, very dear friends, in Christ, amen. So the question this morning is this, what are you worth? Now, I'm, I don't mean, I don't want you to start adding up all of your assets and subtracting your liabilities. Not what I'm talking about. Not so long ago, in New York, a homeless man, a maintenance train worker, and a dog were killed on the subway tracks. Ninety people telephoned the transit authority about the dog. Three people called about the worker. Nobody called about the homeless man. So it might seem that the men were worth less than the dog. Figuring out the worth of something can be a difficult task. A sea captain 
told his passengers about another Atlantic crossing that he had made. On that trip, his ship had actually sunk. And it was only by acting quickly that the crew escaped into a lifeboat. The sea's roughness made it seem unlikely that that small vessel would stay afloat. But then they saw in the distance another steamer. A lantern with a candle was in the emergency supplies. But there was no match. Every man rummaged through his pockets. No match. They checked again, and at last, a match, one match, was found. The man who discovered it handed it with reverence to the mate. The mate, with the same respect, gave it to an officer. And finally, it was gently placed into the hands of the captain. The sailors then clustered around and held up their jackets to keep the wind out. And the captain, in telling that story, commented to his listeners that he had handled precious cargo many times before, but none with greater gentleness than that match. A worthless match had a new value because it meant hope. But then again, we're not here to talk about dogs and matches. When we ask, what are you worth? We're talking about people and souls and eternity. Some years ago, Harold Morowitz a leading chemist, received a birthday card from his daughter. The card read, According to biochemists, the materials of your body are worth only 98 cents. Well, that card got Morowitz to thinking. 98 cents. Is that what he and everybody else is really worth? So he got out his chemical catalog and began looking up all the prices of all the chemicals that make up the human body. What he found was surprising. At the time, hemoglobin was selling for $285 a gram. Insulin was marketed for $47.50 a gram. And that price went climbing with less common items like alkaline phosphatase, which was $225 a gram. But the real shocker came when he got to a follicle-stimulating hormone, which was a steal at $8,000 a gram. And then there was prolactin, the hormone that stimulates milk production for mothers, that could be had for $17,500 a gram. So taking all of these costs and calculating the percentages of each of them in the human body and subtracting a 68% water factor, Morowitz calculated that a 168-pound man would be worth slightly more than $6 million. Silly? Then again, maybe not so silly. Again, how much are you worth? Well, I guess it depends on who gives The answer, ask a terrorist who's filled with hatred and he'll gladly tell you, you're worth more to me dead than alive. To that terrorist, you're worth less than nothing. How much are you worth? To the government, 
Your, your value is a series of formulas on a spreadsheet. To the politician, your value is a vote to be tabulated. To your employer, your value is weighed by what you give versus what you cost. To the advertiser, your value is computed by your spending power. To the credit card company, your value is how much debt you can incur without disaster. Your family, your friends, well, they may value you with high regard. So again, the question, what are you worth? Some of us, upon reflection, we might say, not very much. That's because we're living lives that have been bent and spindled and folded and mutilated. Our self-worth is marred by the bruises and the scars and the open wounds from those cruel and careless comments and the intentional or the inadvertent actions of others. Each of us might feel neglected. We might feel abused. Each of us might feel unappreciated, unrecognized, and unapplauded because of what others have said or done. Now those comments and thoughts of others, that would be enough to make us feel lost or lonely sometimes. But then, then we take a look inside of ourselves and, well, then we can get really depressed. So look, look deep into your heart and tell me what you see. Take a look at those things that you've spent a considerable amount of time covering up from those whose opinions matter the most to you. Take a look at those secret sins that you've kept locked away from everybody except yourself. Take a look at that part of you that you really don't want to see. That part of you that says no one who really knows you could ever love, care for, be a friend, or want to spend any time with you. Well, can I tell you this? You may have been successful in hiding those things from others, even your closest friends and family members, but you haven't hidden anything from God. He knows each and every one of your most contemptible qualities. And God, having seen you for who you really are, still values you. Why? Well, you know, the Scriptures actually ask the same question. It's in the book of Psalms that the writer wants to know what is man, Lord, that you are even mindful of him? The son of man that you, that you even care for him. You see, God doesn't value humanity because his children have done so well. Sorry. God doesn't value, God doesn't love us because of what we've collectively accomplished. I mean, remember, remember what you saw when you looked into your heart. No, 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 you are valued and loved by God because you are and you remain His handiwork. King David explained just how involved God is 
in your life. He writes these words. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them ever came to be. Because of the hand of this divine artist who made you, you have value and you are loved by God. So how valuable are you? Well, you are so valuable to God that He sent His only begotten Son to save you. God sent His Son to take your place. That's why Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That's why He suffered for you. That's why He endured indignity. That's why He died. All of it for you. And that's why St. Paul, in our epistle reading this morning, proudly proclaims, you were bought with a price. The price God paid, the value He's placed on you, well, that was nothing less than His only Son. God valued you so highly that in order to allow you to live, His Son had to die. And that's your value. Now, before I lose you, look at your heart once more. Look at that sin that you try to keep secret. I know, I know, it's uncomfortable. But now, let's look, let's take a look at that sin and let's say that this will be the last time that we do this. This thing that you find so terrible and tragic, bring it out and realize that Jesus, as He hung on the cross of Calvary, was looking at that sin. He suffered to take away that sin. When He breathed His last and He said, it is finished, it was to destroy that sin. That sin was erased with a price. That, my friends, is how valuable you are. So again, what are you worth? Your forgiveness, your salvation are worth the price of Jesus' life. St. Paul said it better than I can, certainly. God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died. For us. Paul knew. He knew that he had once in a time been a murderer. And now, because of Jesus, Jesus being his substitute, he was forgiven. Once, St. Paul persecuted believers. Now, in Jesus... He is forgiven. Once he hated, now he was forgiven. 
bought with a price, cleansed by Christ, St. Paul and all who believe in Jesus as their Savior are forgiven. That is absolute and that is complete. Has that special sin of yours started to evaporate? Is it dissolving before your eyes? I hope so. Because I don't want you to insult Jesus by thinking that sin is somehow more powerful than the forgiveness He won for you. He paid a price so that sin would be gone. Gone. Believe it. Believe in the transforming power of God that recycles the garbage of humanity and makes you, makes me valuable. The last time. What are you worth? Figuring out, as we've seen, the worth of something can be a difficult task. There's a little piece of silk that sits in a museum in Springfield, Illinois. Now, you can't buy that piece of cloth. Why? Well, because that little bit of silk is covered with blood. It was once part of a dress worn by the girl who sat next to Abraham Lincoln on the night he was murdered. As he was dying, she cradled his head in her lap, just as a mother might a child. The state of Illinois bought that dress, cut out that piece of silk, and placed it in public so that all could see. Because of the blood of a great man, that pitiful piece of fabric has a value beyond reckoning. Today, this very day, know your value. No matter what anyone has ever told you, no matter how you feel about yourself or your past, if you have been touched by the blood of the Savior, you have become priceless. Praise God. He does everything well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. On page 11, you will find the offertory. Please rise as we sing that together. in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. We now pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, preserve your church here and throughout the world. Send forth laborers into your harvest and sustain those who you have sent, especially Matthew, our synod president, Timothy, our district president, and Mark, our circuit visitor. Make all Christians bold in confession 
and unwavering in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you have given us your Holy Spirit, making our bodies your temple and knitting us together into the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us courage and constancy to treasure your gift of holy marriage. Preserve your Christians in true chastity, the married in honorable faithfulness to one another, and the unmarried in honorable purity. For you have bought us with the precious price of your Son's blood to glorify you in our bodies. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you are the Lord, and you do whatever seems good to you. As every lawful authority on earth comes from you, uphold in righteousness and health our nation with its leaders. Preserve in wisdom and honor Joseph, our president-elect, Kamala, our vice president-elect, Ned, our governor, and all public servants, including our armed forces, police, and first responders. Send peace in our time. Lord, in your mercy. O God, behold in mercy all for whom we now pray, especially David Mangillo, Hilda Giussino, Nora Raimundo, Arlene Tun, Michael Richards, Anita Kleps, Brian Freed, and Yvonne Shishura. Bring healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to all in need. Receive our thanks for your constant watch and merciful kindness. In every sorrow and every joy, do not let our eyes be drawn from the greater marvel of your kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, renew the gift of your Holy Spirit to all who commune this day. Work in us true contrition to lament and abandon our sins and so to come in confident faith to eat your Son's body and drink his blood, given and shed for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. The service of the sacrament begins on page 12. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In Him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Oh, 
Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after Sahopper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
empowered the body of Christ given for you. Leslie, the body of Christ given for you. Seth, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Deb, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given, Jared, for you. Jason, the body of Christ given for you. Robin, the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ryan, the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Darren, the body of Christ given for you. Gladys, the body of Christ given for you. Kevin, the body of Christ given for you. Beth, the body of Christ, given for you. Kathy, the body of Christ, given for you. Sue, the body of Christ, given for you. Bill, the body of Christ, given for you. David, the body of Christ, given for you. Evelyn, the body of Christ, given for you. The body of Christ, taken to eat, given for you. Chelsea, the body of Christ, given for you. Brad, taken to eat, the body of Christ, given for you. Michael, the body of Christ, given for you. Elaine, the body of Christ, given for you. Eric, the body of Christ, given for you. Beth, the body of Christ, given for you. Bill, the body of Christ, given for you. Lois, the body of Christ, given for you. Vern, the body of Christ, given for you. Randy, the body of Christ, given for you. And the body of Christ, given for you. Mary, the body of Christ, given for you. Hank, the body of Christ, given for you. Dorothy, the body of Christ, given for you. Mary, in the body of Christ, given for you. Rollin, the body of Christ, given for you. David, the body of Christ, given for you. Claudia, the body of Christ, given for you. Rob, the body of Christ, given for you. Marilyn, the body of Christ, given for you. Carol, the body of Christ, given for you. Brenda, the body of Christ, for you. Sal, the body of Christ, given for you. Lorraine, the body of Christ, given for you. Diane, take and eat the body of Christ, given for you. Wayne, the body of Christ, for you. Enola, take and eat the body of Christ, for you. 
put on the body of Christ given for you. Marilyn, the body of Christ given for you. Norman, the body of Christ for you. Holly, the body of Christ given for you. Andrea, take and eat the body of Christ for you. Andrew, the body of Christ given for you. David, the body of Christ given for you. Andy, the body of Christ given for you. Benjamin, the body of Christ, given for you. Rudy, the body of Christ, given for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve each of you steadfast in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. We rise to sing. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We close with hymn number 816 from All That Dwell Below the Skies. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Eternal are thy mercies, Lord. Eternal truth attends thy word. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thy praise shall sound from shore to shore Till sun shall rise and set no more Alleluia, Alleluia Alleluia to God the Father be, all praise eternal Son to Thee, Alleluia, Alleluia, whom with the Spirit we adore, forever and forevermore. Alleluia, Alleluia.